Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Dharma family service. Uh, this service is being pre-recorded, going to be a little different than usual, uh, but let's begin with Nembutsu chanting. And you've probably heard me do this with Dharma School before. Uh, I will say Namo Amida Butsu once, uh, and then we can say it together five times. Namo Amida Butsu. 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 Namanda Butsu. Namanda. Namanda. Okay, thank you very much. Now, since I am pre-recording this video, there's nobody here in the Hondo. So I thought I'd like to kind of talk a little bit about the Hondo, uh, this main hall we have, and discuss the significance of it for Jodo Shinshu. So we call this room the Hondo, and I'll show some different pictures of it, right? This is looking from where you come in at the entrance. Uh, and you can see it there. And so this is the main hall. Hon in this case means primary or main. Do is hall. Shokudo is cafeteria or eating hall. Um, there's different words that use that term do for hall. But here the hondo is the main hall. This is the center of the temple. Because this is where Buddha is. It could also be called the Buddha hall. Right, that this is where the Buddha is, this is really the heart of the temple. So when we look at it, and here's a view, this is what I see. You, if you're sitting in the Hondo, this is not the view you normally see, unless you come up and stand up at the front to do announcements or something. Right, but what I see is a whole bunch of chairs. Now you might notice they're, they look like pews, they basically are pews, uh, and that format was adopted at many of our Buddhist churches and temples here in the BCA. Uh, but this is what we call the Geji, the Geji. Ge means outer. Jin, I tried to look it up, you know, I've, I've seen um, a sanctum, right? Uh, let's just call it the area, the outer area. And then, kind of in contrast to that, is the Naijin, the inner area. Now this is where Buddha is, right? This is where our Buddha statue is. Uh, this is where the ministers sit uh, when we chant. There's also uh, our images of Shinran Shonin, the founder of our school, and then Renyo Shonin, uh, one of his descendants who really uh, turned it into one of the major institutions in Japan. Uh, but this, the Naijin area is this inner area. Now what you might notice is that the Naijin is much smaller than the Gejin. This is different than a lot of Buddhist schools. Most of the time the Naijin is the main area. That's where the monks are, that's where the action takes place, and that's the most important part. And then the Gejin uh, is much, much smaller. But Jodo Shinshu, this is one of the hallmarks of Jodo Shinshu, is that uh, the, the Gejin tends to be much bigger. And that's true at our mother temple, Nishi Honganji, uh, in Kyoto, uh, and many, if not most, of our temples, is that the, the outer area, the area for the regular people, is much bigger. And the Naijin, the area where the Buddha is, is much smaller. So thinking about that, it's because... I think, is because Jodo Shinshu is Buddhism for the ordinary person, the ordinary everyday person, not for the monks. I mean, the minister is important, but it's not for me. It's not different for me or for the minister, 
right? It's, it's some other kind of Buddhism for us and then a different kind for the regular person. No, it's the same for all of us, right? And it really is for the ordinary everyday person. So one of the terms I wanted to bring up is this term bombu, bombu. Now it could be bonbu, B-O-N-B-U, or bombu, B-O-M-B-U, right? And it's the same n mm sound or n mm in Japanese, um, but whether your lips are closed or not is the issue with pronunciation uh, and spelling-wise as well. This bombu is, one way to understand this term is ordinary person. And the ordinary person is in distinction to a sage, a special person, some spiritually advanced person, which traditionally would be a monk. And so monks, really skilled people, really special people, maybe other kinds of Buddhism, they're the important ones. But Jodo Shinshu, Pure Land Buddhism, is about the ordinary person. So one of the hallmarks of Shinshu is that all these people would come for services. Right? And there, I've been to Nishihonganji um, over the years when I lived in Kyoto um, a couple of different times. Uh, and, you know, it's not always packed, but sometimes, man, when that room is packed, it's full. The, the, the Gejin area is just completely full, and it's just really, really amazing when everyone's chanting. I mean, there's a bunch of ministers, too, for the big services. Uh, but when everyone's chanting, it's like really, really powerful uh, and amazing. And that's true over here, um, overseas as well. You know, it's really nice uh, when you go to a service and there's a lot of ministers, but also a lot of lay people, a lot of people in both the Naijin and the Gejin chanting away, right? Uh, it's really, really interesting, incredible experience. So this idea of the foolish person, too. Bombu can also mean foolish person. And that's got a kind of different nuance, huh? Um, I spoke at Enmanji, the temple in Sebastopol, uh, a couple weeks ago for Goltan'e, for Shinran's birthday. So I was talking about this idea of the bombu, right? The ordinary person or even the foolish person. And someone came up to me afterwards and said, you know, that term foolish person, I don't know if I like that. You know, someone might think, I'm not foolish. And yeah, it's, it's an interesting point because in some ways, maybe Jodo Shinshu wouldn't match the average everyday person that encounters it. If you buy into American ideas of exceptionalism, right? And, oh, everyone's special and ev everyone is great. And, you know, there's this idea of, no, I'm ordinary, I'm foolish. Maybe some people wouldn't like that, right? It might turn some people off. Uh, and I realize that and I'm, I'm realizing it. For me, I don't know. It's, it's really interesting. Now, one of the other people I spoke with um, after my talk was not of Japanese descent and, you know, was asking me all these different questions and, you know, and I'm responding. And at one point he said, you know, you've really got to work on your self-esteem. <laughs> and I couldn't help but laugh because I feel like I've had self-esteem issues my whole life. Right? And yet, uh, when I was a student at Institute of Buddhist Studies at IBS, uh, 20, 25 years ago now, I remember at one point realizing, you know what? I find for myself that low self-esteem was actually very self-centered. Arrogant, almost. This is just for me. In my experience, like I, I was able to see my low self-esteem as not a diminished ego, but actually a very strong ego. Strongly dwelling in low self-esteem, I don't know, I'm still kind of working on it because I still find this in myself and this person obviously saw it in me. But partly maybe that helped me resonate with this idea of the foolish being, right? resonate uh, with this idea of the ordinary person. I think there's a part of me too that wants to be special, that, that maybe even sees myself as special right? Whether it's uh, musical or whatever, right? And so to, to be able to understand myself as an ordinary person is maybe a good thing. Resonate with the foolish person aspect and then find that, oh, maybe the ordinary person aspect is important too. For someone else, maybe they uh, can understand the ordinary person aspect, but need to find the foolish person aspect. 
Now, I would never use the foolish person as a judgment against someone else. I think it's very subjective. It's for me to find in myself. And then if someone else, you or whoever, right, if that resonates and you realize that in yourself, then okay, good. Right? But it's not a judgmental thing to level against someone else. It's to find within yourself, even almost existential, right? To see deeply into oneself. And hey, if it doesn't resonate with certain sectors of society, you know, in, in some ways you could say, well, maybe we got to change it. Maybe we got to find something that does resonate. But hey, maybe this is a really important aspect of our tradition too. And that maybe it's a good corrective for some of the problems in our society. Right? To be able to uh, let go of those societal aspects that are telling us you need to go out and take what you can get and you're, you know, you're better than everyone else and you've got to pump yourself up and you know, all that kind of thing. Maybe relaxing into ordinary foolishness uh, isn't such a bad thing. So, you know, thinking about the bombu, the average ordinary person and how big the gejin is, but we also have to think about Buddha. Right? And uh, this, this kind of flip side of it. And Buddha embraces me as I am, foolishness and all. Right? Buddha embraces me uh, with all my failings. Right? Not a sage, not a special person, ordinary. Uh, get angry, filled with ignorance, filled with desires, still embraced by the Buddha. Right? That I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to be something I'm not. That I can be myself. Now, it's kind of interesting. I keep coming back to me, 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 which is, right? Often we think of Buddhism as about letting go of the ego, right? And, and letting go of that kind of stuff. Um, and that would be great, but I don't think my ego is going to let me do, get away with that on my own. Or maybe it's going to trick me into thinking I am, right? But it's Buddha that accepts me as I am. It's Buddha that transforms me. Now, we still, even if you awaken the entrusting mind, Shinjin, it doesn't mean you become enlightened. Right? Shinran talks about having the three poisons, still being a foolish being till the very end, and yet transformed, and yet different, or at least that's what I think. That's my understanding. I'm so different than if I hadn't encountered Buddhism. I can't say what I'd be like if I hadn't, uh, but I'm, I'm pretty sure. I've you know just seen aspects of myself that I don't know if I'd have been able to see otherwise. Uh, I, I think I, I live in the world with other people differently than uh, had I not encountered Buddhism. So I see it as a kind of a push and pull, maybe even kind of a contradictory relationship, tension between Buddha and myself, between the Naijin and the Gejin. And yet, when we're here, whether you're in the Naijin or the Gejin, we're together, right? That these two sides come together. And then with the Nenju wrapped around, right? That, that samsara and nirvana, that's another way to see it. Nirvana is here in the Naijin. Actually, the Naijin represents the pure land. This is the Buddha land. And then the Gejin, samsara. And so normally those are seen as opposites. And yet in Gasho, here in the Hondo, uh, whenever we put our hands together, whenever we say Nembutsu, uh, Buddha's here with us in samsara. So I want to really thank you uh, for joining us uh, for this pre-recorded service. Uh, now, I'd l why don't we conclude the Dharma talk with Gasho as we recite the Buddha's name. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo. I'd like to do a few announcements, just really quick. This is one of our last regular services of the Dharma school year. Normally, this would be the last one, but we're going to do our Shotsuki Hoyo for uh, June, the June monthly memorial service next week. Uh, and so uh, please join us uh, next Sunday for that. That will be June 11th. Uh, and then our bazaar is going to be on June 17th, one day only. Saturday only, uh, in person only. <laughs> uh, but you know, if I think if you want to help, you can still call the office, or you can just come uh, and enjoy. Uh, look at our website for the uh, specific times. 
Then we don't have any services until July. We'll have our July Shotsky is going to be on the second Sunday of July, July 9th. Uh, and then our Obon Festival and service will be on that first weekend in August. So the festival is August 4th, uh, sorry, August 5th, Saturday. And our Hatsubon and Obon service will be August 6th. Uh, Shotsky Bill will be the week after that on August 13th. So, you know, this information should be on the website. Uh, if you have any questions, you can check there. Uh, you can get in touch with the office. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, here at the end of the Dharma school year, that's kind of our calendar, right? The academic year. Uh, and uh, it's been challenging, uh, but really nice too, to have uh, people here in the Hondo for this past year uh, doing our hybrid services, which we intend to keep up with. If you're getting the emails, good, check on those. We'll try to give information as it changes. Uh, if you're not getting in the emails and you want to be, I believe you can sign up on the website, okay? Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, why don't we conclude with Gus Show? Namo Amidabuts. Namo Amidabuts. Namo Amidabuts. Namo Amidabuts. Namo Amidabuts. Namo Amidabuts.